Okay, so hello, we are going to be talking about understanding iterators and iterables in JavaScript. By a show of hands, how many of you write JavaScript day to day? Ooh, a good number of you. How many of you write Python? Ah, okay, because some of the stuff we're gonna talk about here is actually, um, you already have it in Python and we just got it in JavaScript as of ES6. So you're gonna actually recognize some of the stuff that I'm talking about too. Um, but I've already been introduced, but again, I'm Jen. You can reach out to me online at Girl Code, girl with a U. Um, and I am a senior front end engineer at a company called Rent the Runway. Who knows about Rent the Runway? Mostly the women. That is no surprise to me. We rent fabulous gowns um, to women for events, and then we also have an everyday subscription. <laughs> I'm wearing it right now. Okay, so I write JavaScript every day in my job. So I like to think of myself as less of a JavaScript engineer and more of a JavaScript detective because a lot of the time, JavaScript does some like surprising things and I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, what are you doing? And that's when I really like to dig in and try and understand why it's doing the thing that it's doing. So the most recent mystery that I had to solve was about the spread operator. Now the spread operator, if you're not familiar with it or you aren't familiar with JavaScript, is new as of ES6, so relatively new to the language. ES6 was a big um, addition to the language. And the spread operator, you mostly are gonna see it used with arrays. And what it's doing is you have your lovely array. We're gonna put some values in that lovely array. And then you get to use the spread operator with that array. And what it's essentially doing, the spread operator, is it's taking each value out of the array and then spreading it out into a comma-separated list, like this. And so you can use this to spread out values in an array into another array, and you can also use the spread operator to gather values into an array. So we're gonna do some live coding, and we're gonna see how this mirroring shortcut goes, okay. And then I think I have to get out of here. There we go, okay. So, uh, if we're gonna do this array, it's a little bit easier to show this than to actually just talk about it with you. What we wanna do is we're gonna spread out the arrays into console.log. And I think this will be fine. Okay, what can it be? Okay, and so you can see down there that we've actually, um, individually, we've sent in one, two, and three as a comma separated list to uh, console.log. And then if we wanted to, we could spread it out into another array. So in this case, like so. You can see I've now put all those values into an actually different array. Um, and then if we're doing a function, we can do an uh, spread operator inside of the arguments and we're gonna see what that does for us. Um, so if I call this again with one, two, and three, you can see it's gathered all of the arguments and put them into an array for me. Um, so the spread operator is already very, very handy um, in JavaScript for getting values out of an array, copying them into another array, or using them to gather arguments in a function. But, you know, it's used for arrays, it can also be used for a string. And, you know, actually this kind of makes sense because strings in JavaScript, you can sort of treat them like arrays. Like if I wanted to get out the A here, I could do this string save to a variable and then ask for its zeroth index and I would get the A. So in some cases, like this actually kind of makes sense because it's like an array already. So of course the spread operator works on it. But then I saw this. And this is where my brain was like, uh, what you doing? Um, so, Again, I said like if you work on Python, this is gonna be really familiar to you because you guys already have generators. We got them in uh, ES6 officially, though we technically have had them in Chrome and some browsers for a while. But we got an official spec for them in ES6. And if you don't understand why this is really weird and your face is like, 
what? Um, let's go over generators real quick, and then you'll understand why this is really strange. So this is a generator, and I know it's a generator because it has an asterisk next to the function keyword. And inside that generator, you're also gonna see a special statement called yield. And yield in a generator means pause. To use the generator, we're going to call it. So in this case, we call it, and then we get back a generator object. And that generator object has on it a method called next. When you call next, you're gonna get back an object with two keys on it, the value and done. Value is whatever is to the right that you want to send back on the yield statement. So you can see yield one and my value is one. And then done is gonna tell you the status of the generator, so if it's done or not. And in this case, it's not because there's more statements to run. So if we keep calling next, then we're gonna keep getting values. And we don't actually have to yield any values if we don't want to. Yield just means pause. You don't have to give it a value next to it. Um, so what it's gonna do is it'll just be value undefined in that case. And each time that you're calling next here and you're yielding, it is a true pause. Most of the JavaScript that I write is really run to completion. Once I start the program, it's not gonna pause at any point. You can do some async work, but that's really throwing something onto the event loop and it's just gonna come back around. But with generators, you're actually pausing the code. So when you see a yield statement, it's actually truly pausing. And this function isn't gonna run again until I tell it to by calling next. So if we call next again, we're yielding three, value three, still not done. Now we call next again, it goes back and enters the generator again and sees that there's nothing else to be done so our done is actually true. And again, we're not yielding any final value here, so value is undefined. Now, you can also pass information into a generator via yield. So, you know, this looks a little bit odd at first um, when you're looking at it, because like, okay, I did yield, I did yield and I'm doing generator.next, but I'm actually passing the value into the second call to next. Why is it not the first one? Well, the first time that you call next on the generator, you're really starting it up. And you're telling it basically just run until you see a yield statement and then pause. And so actually there's nothing for this generator to do until it hits that first yield statement. So I'm calling next and I'm starting up the generator. It sees that yield statement in the assignment expression and it pauses. And you can see this is a true pause because it's not assigning anything yet. Then I'm gonna pass the number two in. And now it's gonna take the place of where that yield previously was, and now it's actually going to get assigned to const num. And then when I yield again, now we're actually doing a number to the side of that. So we pause, but we also are sending back two plus two. So now we're getting value four. And then when I call this again, we've set num before, so we're yielding six this time. Then we're done. And a really, another like very interesting thing is about generators is that you can run generators from inside other generators. And you're gonna do so using the yield star expression. So to illustrate this, I have a generator called outer and a generator called inner. And as you can see, outer is calling inner. And again, we're gonna be calling outer, getting its generator object, and then we're going to be starting it up. And here it runs until it hits yield and then it's gonna pass back one. All right, now we're actually hitting that new generator though using the yield star expression. And what's happening here is a bit different because we're actually going inside of that generator. So yield star acts as a delegate. And now every time that next gets called, it's actually calling next on this inner generator. It's just that you didn't have to go through and plot out all the different calls to next within this outer generator. You're using yield star, and so it's gonna naturally just do this for you. So now we call next again. We're still inside of the inner generator, so our value is B, and we're still not done. And then when we call the next again, we're gonna go back to the outer. So this is a way of iterating through these generators uh, with yield star, and you don't have to worry about calling next on them. And now you might be able to see why this seems kind of weird. Because the spread operator works with arrays and it works with strings and they kind of have a similar structure in that they have indexes that it can go through. But what is it doing with the generator? Is it calling next on it? Like, 
how is it running it? If I have to manually put in next, like, what is a spread operator doing with this? And as it turns out, you can use a spread operator with anything that is an iterable in JavaScript. And generators are iterables. So are arrays and so are strings. Maps and sets, which are new data structures as of ES6 in JavaScript, are also iterables. So you can use a spread operator with any of these and it'll actually spread out the values from it. Now, we didn't actually have much of a concept of an iterable before ES6. Like, you could do iteration, of course, but we didn't actually have a protocol for you to use. So an iterable is a data structure that's going to provide an interface for iteration. What does that mean? It means it's gonna use the new iterable protocol. So this is new as of ES6. There's an actual protocol for these things. What this protocol says is that you're gonna use a special key and an object to turn it into an iterable. That special key is called symbol.iterator. Symbol is also new to ES6. It's a new primitive, and it's gonna produce an anonymous, unique value. So here we're using symbol, and I'm using the keyword key, and it's gonna generate a new symbol for me. And again, this is anonymous and a unique value. And you can use symbol in your own code, but it's also used internally in JavaScript. So an array is an iterable, because it puts in place the iterable protocol, which says that at the key symbol.iterator, you're gonna provide back an iterator. So if you go to array.prototype and you request its symbol.iterator, you're gonna see a function there. And the same for string, and the same for generators. So these all have iterators that live on them at this key. The iterator is actually the object that's going to implement the iterator protocol. So there's the iterable protocol and the iterator protocol. The iterable protocol tells you how to set up an object that's going to point to an iterator. And then the iterator protocol is gonna tell you what you actually need to do uh, to match the iteration protocol that would be expected of say the spread operator or anything else that wants to use that protocol. So to do that, you're going to create a function and it needs to return an object with a next method on it, which is going to return an object with a value and a done key. And we've already seen this because generators implement the iterator protocol. And so we've actually already learned this by the time we get to this point. Like we've already seen you call, get an object, get back the next method, and then call that to get the done and the value. So if you call the fake iterator, you get back the object with the next method and you call next, so you get value and done. And because we know all of this, we can create our own. So we're going to be creating an irritable iterator. <laughs> it's going to be quite angry. That is the plan. All right, so, oh, pray to the live coding gods that this is all gonna be fine. Okay, so we're gonna create our iterator function. Now, we're gonna have to keep track of where we are. So in this case, oh, not const, we're gonna do a step that we're going to increment, and then we're going to return our object with the next method on it. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we increment the step. Cool, that's done. And then we're gonna decide what we wanna do if the step is something in particular, right? So in this case, if the step equals one, we are going to return an object with a value and done is gonna be false in this case because we're not done yet. <coughs> and trying to remember, what is it? Yes, okay, I remembered the shortcut for this because I don't use it very often. Okay, so the first time our iterator is gonna be like not super happy with us and then we're just gonna progressively annoy it. Um, 
So what we're going to do, I'm just going to do some quick copy and paste. So when it's step two and when it's step three, we're going to change the emojis so that it gets progressively, you know, mad at us. Okay, so now we got a red face. And uh, now we're going to have him <coughs> oof, cursing. Oof, oof, this, this iterator is mad. Okay, so now we have this. And is this big enough for everyone to see? Should I make it any bigger? A little bigger, someone has requested. I don't know if it's gonna, there we go. Is that okay? Better? Great. All right. So we have our iterator, we have our step, we're plus plusing our step, and then depending on what step we're on, we're gonna return something else. Ooh, and if we're done, we are going to return value undefined, and done will be true. We're going to call this iterator. And then I'm going to use the spread operator. Nope, fake iterator is what we want. To do this. OK. Ooh, we have an error. What did I do wrong? Does anyone know? Let's see, I have the iterator, I have my step, I am returning an object. Do I need to, oh no, I don't need to call fake iterator. Um, someone else said something though, something about parens. Oh, you think one of these is extra? Mm. Yeah, maybe, let's see. Nope, that should be fine. Fake iterator. Let me console.log out. <laughs> Dude, that does always work. Um, and let me comment this out. So at least what we should have here is, yeah, we are getting back. Oh, OK. Um, it should be calling next. Step equals one, this is all fine. Um, okay, well, if I do fake iterator dot next, and I save that, let me destructure this. Give me out the value, we're gonna get out done, and then instead of using the spread operator here, it should return the right items to me. So yeah, so it's returning like angry face and false. And then if we called next again, that should also work. Um, if I do console.log with the spread operator, though, it should have iterated through it. What parentheses after the fake iterator? Oh, you mean like this? No. No. Um, the reason that you don't need to do that um, is because you're actually going to be calling dot next on the fake iterator. So you only call the fake iterator one time, which is here. And that returns to you the object with the next method on it. So actually, there's nothing else for you to call except the next method. Um, and I don't know what I've done wrong to make this angry at me. No, you don't have to put the star. No. Um, yield star is only for when you're doing another generator, which I will show you later. Um, look, see, it said found non-callable iterator. And I'm guessing it's because I've already called it. On line 24? Oh, but you know what? Maybe I don't. Um, no, that's not going to work. 
Oh, this is the one that's having the problem, right? Okay. Yeah, it keeps saying it's a non-callable iterator. Okay, well, in any case, the spread error should work. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, um, but that's okay. So every time we call dot next, we're gonna get the next thing until it's done. Um, so what the spread upper should be doing here that I can't figure out what I have done wrong is um, it should be uh, going through each time on the uh, iterator. It's actually gonna call next on the iterator each time. So because the spread operator is using the iteration protocol to loop through things, it's actually calling dot next on this. Um, so. One of the other things we're going to do, which if this is correct, and for some reason it's my setup that's not working, um, this should work. If not, I have a GIF of it somewhere. I'm still looking for mistakes. I'm like, I know something's not right here. It should it be const? If it's const, you actually can't reassign it. Um, you use it on iterables, but when I did, oh, shoot, that's what I did. I know what I did wrong. So I have the iterator here, but I'm dumb and I forgot to actually assign it. That's what I did wrong. That jogged my memory, thank you. Okay, so. Here's what's going on that I just totally blanked on because uh, live coding is not my thing. Okay, is that we actually have to save it to this or else it's not an iterable. <laughs> so this is very instrumental actually. Um, as much as this was a faux pas, it actually illustrates that like you can't actually use the spread operator if you don't make it a true iterable, which means it has to be part of the iterable protocol. And the protocol says you have to save it on this key. So if I do this and now I console.log, irritable, because it's made. Now it works. <laughs> so obviously my offering to the live coding gods like wasn't enough, um, <laughs> but that's okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we have this same thing uh, same iterator, so that is totally actually fine. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hack the array prototype. I'm like, am I misspelling everything now? Okay, so same thing. It already has this on it, but we're going to hack it. Um, so we can't actually do this in my editor. Um, because apparently Node has like some sort of like security something. I don't know. It doesn't like when you mess with the array prototype. Um, so we're going to do it actually here. And then once we've done this, it might yell at me. Yeah, it's going to yell at me because I didn't put it in an array. Ah, so now it's angry all the time. So no matter what I'm putting into this array, because I've messed with its um, iteration, I've actually overridden its iterator, um, when you try to use the spread operator with any array that you create, it doesn't matter you know, what's inside of it or how long it is, When I use it, it's just going to give me a lot of a lot of anger. <laughs> it's just mad. <laughs> now, this is a lot of fun to do, by the way, and I really encourage you to do this to your coworkers um, and just see how long it takes them to figure out <laughs> like what's going on here. Um, and I've had a lot of fun with this, but this is a, a a clear understanding of like how you can overwrite the array prototypes iterator and do this kind of like fun thing. Now, this doesn't actually affect other things though. So if you were doing for each or you're mapping or filtering or anything like that, it's not using the iteration protocol. So you're gonna get the same values. 
This is really just for the spread operator, and there are a couple other methods that are going to use this. Um, if we do array.from, and sorry, I forgot to put this up higher for y'all. I apologize. Um, then it's actually going to be copying from the iterator, not the values that are in the array. So you would expect this to put a string ABC inside of the new array. Array.from copies an array and puts its values into a new array. But it's using the iteration protocol. And since we overwrote that to only send us angry emojis, that's all we're going to get. Now, this is also true of some other things in JavaScript, some stuff that you might use. So for instance, um, for of. Um, so I believe if I just do irritable, this will work. And then let me comment this out. OK. So for of uses the iteration protocol as well. So you can see here that it's still just looping through and getting all the values. Um, some other stuff that uses this is also uh, destructuring in JavaScript. Um, so if you wanted to, oh, if you want to get like the first value, and then you're going to gather up your other values. I'd have to run this. This one should work, maybe. No, you know what I have to do? Um, for this one to work, I'd have to create a new array. Let me go back to my, okay. So if I do first, let me just do this real quick with fun. All right, so you can see I'm, I'm destructuring from an array that Technically, if I'm destructuring the first thing from this array, it should be that ABC string. But since destructuring actually uses the iteration protocol and we've overridden it, we're actually going to get the first angry emoji. So actually, a lot of things that we use in JavaScript pretty much every day at this point since ES6 gave us all these capabilities is actually based off of the iteration protocol. We made, we made this all angry. That was good. That was fun. OK. Now, the other thing that's really interesting that is newer, is not included in ES6, but is coming up and is available in most browsers at this point, is async iteration. So in this case, you're actually going to be able to create an iterator that returns promises. And it's part of actually using async await. Now, this is a little bit different because to create this, we're actually going to put it on the async iterator uh, key instead of just the iterator key. And this, of course, means that it's going to be an asynchronous iterator. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to get rid of this. Make sure I can save it. Get rid of this. All right, so what I have here is that I have a bunch of emoji, just random emoji that I've put into an object with key value pairs. That's all fine. And then over here, what I have is a function called wait. And wait is just a promise that doesn't resolve until this set timeout that I like put in what milliseconds I want it to to resolve. So that's my wait. And then I just have a random function that's going to give me a random number up to a max. Um, and then here we have. Uh, the get emoji request. And so you can see that this is async and it's using await. So in JavaScript now, you can create async functions and then you're going to use the await keyword to actually wait for something to resolve. So in this case, remember that wait is a promise that only resolves when that set timeout is finished. So we're going to actually, at that portion, just like kind of wait until we actually finish things. And it's just like to basically make this look more asynchronous. Um, and then we're going to return an emoji uh, using whatever we requested. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create an async generator. So we could create an async iterator on our own like we just did a custom iterator. 
but generators are already doing this for us. You know, it's kind of annoying to go create your own custom iterators unless you really need them when generators are already available for you. So we're gonna create an async generator instead. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna yield get emoji. And then inside of get emoji, we're going to yield here. Um, so we get to decide what we're gonna pass in. So we're gonna call async gen to get the object. And then we're gonna call generator.next to start this up. Now, again, when you start up a generator the first time, you're just gonna call .next and that's gonna start it, but it's actually like not going to, um, it's not gonna actually be able for us to like pass in something initially with this. So if I wanted the gemstone emoji, like this is not gonna get that for me. Um, in fact, we can run it and we can do const value and you'll see that it's going to be going to be undefined. Okay, so if we do command C. So see, it's undefined um, because we're just running the generator. We're just telling it to go ahead and start up and do, do whatever you need to do before you see the first yield statement. And honestly, there's just nothing for this to do. But the second time we call this, we actually can request something now. So the first time, uh, you know, isn't gonna do anything, that's fine. But the second time, we are gonna request the gemstone. But because this is asynchronous, what we actually have to do is we're gonna do dot then on it. So every time now that you're gonna yield something, because this is an async generator, it's going to return a promise to you. And so then you get to call then on this. We're gonna destructure the value here. And we'll console.log the value. Okay. And as you can see, there's kind of a wait until it gets the value for you. Um, so if we were to do another one you see it's waiting and then it gets it. So it's only waiting a certain amount of time. Um, but this is an async generator. Now, some of the fun stuff you can do with this is um, what I've built here is uh, an async generator called random emoji stream. And what this is gonna do is it takes all of my emojis and it uses the random uh, function that I called before. We give it the max of how many keys are actually in that object, so it will only grab the ones from zero to that length. Um, and then it's gonna yield one of the emojis. Um, it's gonna do this every second. So we're gonna use a new syntax called for a wait to call this one. So since this is a stream and we're continuously gonna get emojis from this, we're gonna use this syntax to iterate going through the generator but also waiting for values. And then we'll just console.log. Uh, oh yes, and also, kind of forgot about this, you have to do this inside of an async function or else you can't use a wait. It'd be nice if you could use it on your own, but um, you do need to use it inside of an async function or else it yells at you, which is fine. I mean, our iterator yelled at us a bunch, so I'm used to it by now. Okay, and what do we wanna call this? I guess emoji reader. Okay, and we're going to console.log the emoji, and then we are gonna call emoji reader, and something went wrong. Love it. Uh, it's not an async iterable. Oh, I think I need to actually, yep, okay. So now you see every one second we're gonna get a new random emoji. So this stream is providing data for us and then using for await inside of an async function, we're actually reading that data and get to do something with it. 
Now, I think I've done enough live coding for now, so I'm not going to do any more. But, <laughs> um, you know, this is really useful for if you have streams of data and you need to start doing like pipeline processing with it because this allows you to do that. And one of the great things that you get out of this is the ability to read your code a little bit more clearly when it comes to async code. Because everything that we're doing here, if I did this with just callbacks, holy hell. And if I did this with just promises, Jesus, no. Um, you know, promises are really great, but when you're doing like a lot of async work like this, especially pipeline work, this doesn't work as well. Um, so that was tons of fun. And we're gonna go back to the real world now, which is my presentation. Okay. So, you know, that was us looking at everything in the iter like iterator world, like how to create an iterator, what an iterable even is, how the spread operator works with them. But you might also know that in JavaScript, the spread operator now works with objects too. And objects by themselves aren't iterables. You have to make them an iterable like I did earlier when I used our sample uh, iterator and combined it using the symbol.iterator keyword. So that will actually take an object and make it into an iterable. But by default, they aren't. Still, you can use them if you want to now. Uh, instead of using the iterable protocol, if you want to use the spread operator with an object, it's going to take all the keys and values out of an object and you can place them inside of Another object, it's super useful as a replacement for object.assign, but in the spec, it's just not using the iterable protocol anymore. The spec for this is actually very different. So you might see um, these being used in code and be like, oh, it's using the iterable protocol. It's not, it's actually a completely different spec, um, but it is totally useful. And all of this just makes me love <laughs> uh, iterables and the spread operator like even more. There's so much you get to do with it and I was really happy to dive in and understand all these things that are coming out in JavaScript that use these protocols, as well as very clearly understanding, you know, what doesn't. So thank you all for your time. I hope you had fun. Happy to take questions now. So, so for some reason, on my local machine, running Node against that exact same code kept producing an error that was, um, it's not a number. And I was like, okay, I don't know what you want, but I'm guessing you're mad about me overriding the array prototype because you work perfectly when I'm creating just a random iterable. So yeah, I think they might have something going on where they're not quite ready for me to do that sort of hacking <laughs> in Node, but in the browser, totally fine. Oh, you can totally do anything in the browser. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't see any more questions, so. Oh, we have one. You want to know about uh, just that? Just a little bit, so we, like for people who had no idea and they just get into it. Sure. Themselves. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm a big user of React. Um, how many of y'all use React? Good number. Yay. So I really love React. It's it's like my my chosen framework. I've used it for for you know four plus years. Um, and uh, one of the things that I did over the past year was I actually started diving into the Fiber Reconciler code base. 
So uh, React has a reconciler that tells you what parts of your application have changed and allow you to make minimal updates to the DOM to uh, make those changes onto the screen. Um, that reconciler was rewritten a couple years ago and it's actually really interesting because it's making a lot of changes. So um, we recently did a screen recording with Dan Abramov. He is on the React core team at Facebook, very well known. Uh, he is also the creator behind Redux, if you've used that library. And what Dan was essentially doing was we came up with a silly concept uh, for him to implement into the reconciler. And then he walked us through how he would actually do that. Um, so it's a way of starting to get used to what that code base looks like, um, what the different parts of it are, how they've you know, chunked up the different sections according to the different phases of reconciliation. Um, and particularly helpful if you want to you know, take down the code base and start looking at it yourself. Um, and you know, maybe you want to contribute. Maybe you just are really curious about some of the stuff that happens. Um, it's a great screencast. It's coming out soon. Yes, it does. He's coming with the microphone. Just so everyone can hear. The async generator functions um, and the four awaits. Yes. Last time I remember looking, those were like in a language proposal. Mm -hmm. They are still proposals, but they will be in the upcoming language. Um, but they are already implemented in Chrome and I believe also Firefox. Uh, I only really have Twitter, um, which is nice because you get to see things like the revolving TV in my hotel room. <laughs> Why it's there, I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm on Twitter. I speak pretty prolifically at conferences, so I post a lot of slides and sometimes I post, like, I did post a GIF of me turning the array in the browser, the prototype, into a mad array. Um, so you can definitely follow me on Twitter at Girl Code. Um, and keep up with me there, but I don't have like a website, blog, podcast, anything like that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone.